Welcome to Kingdom Strong's Pitch Monster Castle Building Tutorial. Joining us are the players Super Walrusman and Epic Izumi to discuss the step-by-step -step process required to build your very own Pitch Monster Castle. Yes, some mechanics for the everyday questions. In order to best demonstrate the castle building process, we will be building one from scratch. This captured castle will unfortunately have to be sacrificed for the cause. And this beautiful castle, unfortunately, is going to get deleted right now. Not quite a Pitch Monster. What I have to do now is to build something that we call Stage 1 Pitch Monster. Meet the Stage 1 Pitch Monster. A Stage 1 Pitch Monster consists of two main components. Oil smelters and stone structures. I'm going to be building what folks call a Stage 1 Pitch Monster. And it's going to be mostly these oil smelters. There's a specific design and it's not going to be perfect, but the mac maximum efficiency is uh, 600 oil pots. We're going to see how close I can get to that. And why exactly are you putting down some smelters and some towers the way you are? I'm putting down some smelters and some towers because you need 600 spots to put the oil before you delete the smelters. So how can you store this so that if you wanted to do this quickly, um, I know there's an easy way. You go here to the cloud settings, and then you go to store castle, and then you hit this right here, save to cloud, stage one, pitch monster. Done. Step one. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So now you can delete this. Delete all constructing, yes. And this is how to load the castle. You go here, store castles. Stage one pitch monster, you hit deploy preset. Done. So if you're in a pinch, and you stage one pitch monster, uh, it'll appear right before your eyes. So 600 pots is, a smelter's five, right? So 600 divided by five, there needs to be 120 smelters down, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I eventually delete three extra smelters to leave me with 120 smelters total. This will grant me access to 600 pitch pots. 120. So get rid of these. This should be maximum right here. Now I have to go and cart it up. So I know from my experience, if you're not wanting to cart instantly, then you can run the castle times five hours or something for times five build speed of those. Yes. If you're under serious attack, I know there's other ways that with cards that are beneficial. Which cards do you recommend? I'll show you which cards. I am going to use this expert mason's card to reduce the time needed to build this castle from 18 days to just over 3 days. Now, I will only need 15 master castle designer cards to instantly build this castle. My construction research is level 10 during the time of filming this video. If you run the times 5 card and then do the instant yeah. cards, that definitely saves you a lot of money and time. The uh, build speed card stacks with the the instant cards. So I'm going to show you now how to card this up so it doesn't take all year to build. You're going to want this card right here, Expert Masons. This is going to be the most important card you're going to want to play. This will reduce all the build speed. Yeah, this will reduce it all by five. So now instead of 18 days, it's only going to take three days. Now you're going to go here and buy a bunch of Master Castle Designers. And this is six hours, so you need four of these per day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I play the necessary cards to complete the construction of this castle. I can now place five pitch pots for every oil smelter. Now it's time to place the pitch. Now in the beginning, I struggled with not comprehending how you just did that, you were able to do a 5x5 five five pot. 
Yeah. Explain how you do that. You go here to the troops. The pots are classified as a troop, and you go to the 5x5 five five section, and now you can place your oil pots by the 5, by the 25 actually. Done. Maybe it's 650 oil pots. You could mess around with this, but uh, as you delete these pots right here, as you delete these stone walls and replace them with oil pots, then you can probably fit a little more here. I get 15 more oil pots from that. So this is maximum efficiency. I need cards for the next section, so I'm not going to card it, but you'll see I'll get 15 more oil pots. You can put them here. This or something like this will be maximum efficiency. So th this is the stage one pitch monster. Let's move to the stage two pitch monster. Meet the stage two pitch monster, Castle. This castle provides for a formidable defense against multiple timed captain armies. In order to do this, we are going to have to delete all of these oil pots. Without deleting any of the towers that they're on. So just the smelters. Yes, just the smelters. So, somewhere along the line, someone discovered that you can delete the smelters and keep all the oil pots. You want to protect them at all costs because you can't get them back without replacing all those smelters. Now that the oil smelters are gone, it is time for me to create my stage to pitch monster design. The first thing that I am going to do will be to move these oil pots out of the way to give myself room for construction. I need to shuffle these pots around so that I do not lose them in the construction process since these oil pots are very expensive to replace. It make it easier to delete. Now that the pots are out of the way, and the old squares deleted, I finally have enough room to work with. We're going to start here. You're going to want at least nine squares here. This is going to hold oil. I got this tactic from Chris Dekello. And uh, when you're defending bombs, you could put nine oil pots there instead of one. Right here is going to be the nine, right in the middle. Then you want one here, one one stone wall here. You want one stone wall here. You want to surround the perimeter because this will be the last piece standing in the event you are attacked. Now you want. It does say a nice mention there to do it every other space like that still allows room for the pikemen and everybody to be able to run away from the keep and things to defend. Yes. Then you're going to want an outer layer of uh, killing pits. I'm actually going to put an extra stone wall there and an extra stone wall here to make it as uh, difficult as possible for attackers to get in here. Now we're going to do that again. It's important to have killing pits and stone walls layered toward the center of the keep so that defending pikemen can hold the attacking forces back. One more layer will provide for sufficient space for the pikemen to move through. And uh, the point of building the inside first rather than the outside is uh, you can cart up the inside quicker because you don't have to, you could use the wall construction team, you don't need to use the uh, instant castle designer card for the because the outer towers will take up a lot of time to build whereas these uh, inner towers as I said you could get 60 hours worth of uh, walls constructed so you want to build the inner inner ring first and that's using the 12 hour stone wall cards correct correct it's coming out a little uneven isn't it because there's four I did that that's what I did. I'm okay with that. Let's keep that. I like that. 
And now let's let's start off. Yeah, let's start off with the uh, checkerboard. So we're gonna leave a space here for the pikemen to get through. So we're gonna start our checkerboard right here. Then we're gonna leave a space. We're gonna leave a space here. And do it again. I need to make a stone wall and moat checkerboard design for the remaining two sides of this castle. Again, these things aren't rocket science. I am going to make a path for the pikemen using these killing pits. This will allow my defending pikemen to move unhindered throughout the whole defense. What he's doing right now is he's marking his paths for the pikemen to be able to run around with. Next, I fill in the moat. I need to do this whole process three times more for each side. I am going to take my time ensuring that I do not make any mistakes. Notice how I leave five squares on each side to leave room for the great towers. I run into an issue with space on the top left portion of this castle. I need to move oil pots and delete stone walls. Now, I may continue with my castle development process. This castle is beginning to look like a pitch monster. Next you want to build the guard houses so that when you cart it up, you'll be able to put troops down and they'll finish before the outer ring because the outer ring takes way too long to build. I like to build the inside portion of my pitch monster first since it will finish first when it is time to cart it up. In the event of an attack, the outer ring is the least important portion of the castle, yet it takes the longest to build. Now that the inside of my castle is done, I fill in the corners and the outer ring. I must give credit to the player outlaw for the corner design I am building on this castle since it is fantastic for stopping the attacking pikemen in the event of a corner attack. You may recognize this design from the defense by Little Bull on Global Conflict 9 against BBH Faction. I've linked the full video of Little Bull's performance on the top right corner of the screen. Here you will see how effective these corners are at defending against timed attacks. I place the ballistas and turrets. Since this parish does not have turrets yet, I will be using wood walls to represent the placement for turrets. Ballistas that touch each other shoot at the same target. When you put ballistas in one space apart, they will shoot different targets. So far I have seven spaces for turrets, so I will need to find three more spaces once the guardhouses are removed. It's now time to place the finishing touches onto this castle, and to fill it with troops. I already have the expert mason's cart in play from carting the stage 1 pitch monster. Watch this castle come to life as I play 112R moat cart, 112R killing pits cart, 112R stone walls cart, a 12R killing pits cart, another 12R killing pits cart, one master castle designer cart, and one more master castle designer cart. Remember since we built this castle from the inside out, only to master castle designer cards are needed to finish the guardhouses. I play an advanced guardhouses card and fill this castle with 360 pikemen and 200 archers in preparation for a timed attack. I place the pikemen in the middle of the castle with an aggressive stance so that they engage the enemy during the battle. This will preserve my moat over the course of multiple timed attacks. Now, I place the archers. This placement will work for now. Now the 560 troops are down, I can delete all of these guardhouses. Watch how the troops remain on the walls despite the guardhouses being deleted. Like the oil pots, the units will remain there until dismissed or defeated in battle. Look at how much space becomes available once the guardhouses are deleted. I have to finish the backside of this castle now. This is going to take a while, because the back side of this castle needs a lot of work before it is complete. I need to find a space for 10 ballistas, 10 turrets, and some towers for me to place groups of archers atop of. I'm making this castle as I go, and I'm looking for the perfect design of towers to uh, put put archers on top of and to fit all the ballistas in there. I'm using the wooden walls as place markers for the ballistas and the turrets because the parish isn't done yet. The parish will be done by the time this bomb lands. I'll make sure of it. 
So I also got to exchange the large towers on the outer wall with great towers. And I'm doing this last because it takes the longest to card. So to make it as realistic as possible, if you were in a hurry and you didn't know how many cards you have, you'd card the middle of the castle first. You're gonna put archers on the towers. And I use groups of nine. Yeah. Because nine groups of archers will kill a pikeman. I find uh I find groups of twenty-five archers to be wasteful. Watch as I meticulously place the last remaining pieces of wall and moat. Configuring the castle this way will mitigate the damages to my ballistas and turrets in the event of a backside attack. Furthermore, my ballistas and turrets are far enough forward to be effective during a frontal assault. Well, now that the back of the castle is finished, I have to move these pots from the front of the castle all around. And you can move them in groups, or you can click them all and move them all as one unit, just as I did. Now I'm going to open up the front here, because I have some extra mode. Now this is a Kingdom Strong secret. Since we have 56 extra mode, we might as well place them. And I'll place them up the front. So we'll make more, more checkerboard up front. Since the uh, catapults can't destroy this. And it's hard for them to dig through. Yeah. We have the oil pots, so might as well. Oh, I see checkerboard that way. Yeah, and if you want to play the uh, 600 guardhouse card, you could put, even put a row of pikemen here to defend against the uh, captain tactics. Look how devastating this castle is to a frontside attack. I move all the pots forward, and now I can kind of move them as groups and spread them around as needed. And I'm actually going to. Uh, Put the oil on the outside walls. We're gonna watch you do in the smelt, placing the smelting pots like at times 64 or whatever. <laughs> the pots placement is the hardest part. Yes, by in, far. In my opinion. I move the oil pots one by one to their appropriate location atop the walls of this pitch monster. This is as fast as I can make this video go at times 20 speed, and it's still gonna take forever. It is quite satisfying to see the uh, finishing product coming together here. And to commemorate this video, I am naming this specific castle design the Kingdom Monster. Nobody's tried this specific design before, so it will be exciting to see how well it defends against timed cohesive armies. I think this might be the next best uh, pitch monster design to me. You see this? I see this. Behold the Kingdom Monster. Now, I will interdict this castle so I can upgrade the parish defenses to level 10. Alright, I'm back. So, it took me a while. And I now have level 10 tunnelers. Current level 10. Right? I got level 10 turrets. I got level 10 ballistas. I, inst I, I instant carded a bunch of research, so now I have level 10 uh, conscription, see level 10, and I also have level 10 swords. I hear that the swords help the knights. They give them more hit points. So, this is the final product. I opened up the corners here, and here are all the turrets and all the ballistas. This is the Kingdom Monster, and I have a player bombing me as we speak. I have 10 armies inbound. This player right here, Wee Wee Pee Pee, is helping me out, and he's going to attack me with 10, 5 Captain Armies. They're very well timed. And I am going to defend these the best I can with this castle. Let me find these guys. 30 minutes away. Here they are. These are real raised armies. They're coming to attack this castle. So, 
In 31 minutes, I'll have to defend this onslaught of 10 armies. And I'm going to put it in a separate video. You're going to have to watch a separate video to see the results. So click here to see the results of this epic bomb. Thank you for watching Kingdom Strong.